Hello, my name is Danny Nolan and I'm the Director of Chassis Sim Technologies and welcome to this latest episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner. What I'd like to discuss with you in this episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner is revisiting a tutorial we did a couple of months ago um, when we discussed calculating the stability index from lateral accelerometers. And what we're going to be discussing today is a slight correction on um, what we discussed a couple of months uh, a couple of months ago, because a couple of my colleagues did um, point out the, a mistake that I did made. But one of the nice things about uh, when you do make a mistake, it actually does force you to um, have a bit more of a think about what you actually did. And so um, now what I uh, so what I did was went back to the drawing board, had a bit more of a think, and quite frankly, what we've come up with is actually something a hell of a lot better. And that's actually what I want to discuss with you um, today. So let's get started. First things first. I want to um, discuss with you the corrected form of um, the lateral moment equation. Now, it's still um, uh, now uh, we can still calculate forces from our lateral accelerometers. That's still completely valid. The mistake I did make was the fact that the um, lateral moment actually should be this form here, which is our yaw moment, is one minus the weight distribution times the weight distribution at the front times AYF minus AY uh, times the front lateral accelerometer minus the rear lateral accelerometer times g times wheelbase times uh, the mass total, um, where obviously all the terms are the same that we discussed um, uh, last time, where the lateral moment is in Newton meters, weight distribution is percentage of the car divided by 100, AYF is our front lateral accelerometer, AY rear is our rear lateral accelerometer, G is acceleration due to gravity, wheelbase is the car, MT is the total mass in kilograms. One thing I do want to say, though, is for those of you who have been using the other version of this lateral moment equation, it, the trends aren't actually going to point you in the in the wrong direction. The trends will still be the same. However, the margins are just uh, what will happen is that the, the lateral moment has just been overestimated. So look, if you have been using it, it's not the end of the world. That being said, it certainly got me thinking, um, if you do use this uh, form of the lateral um, of the lateral moment equation, what you'll find is that the margins are going to be a lot um, uh, are, are going to be a lot smaller, and that really got me to thinking about, okay, there's something here that's not so much not quite right, but I think something here we need to tidy up. So I got thinking about it. And looking at the bicycle equation uh, model of the car, really, there was something that really hit me in the nose. And really, if we take a look at our lateral, uh, at our um, complete moment equation, basically, it boils down, any lateral moment we get is effectively IZ times the acceleration of, uh, uh, times the acceleration of our yaw rate. And that can be broken down into basically this term, which is delta steer, which is effectively the, con uh, the, the control power of the, um, the car. Um, then we've got our DNDR plus C, R, uh, uh, C dot R times B, CF times A, CT times VX times the yaw rate, plus A times CF minus B times C dot R on um, C, uh, C total, which it basically is effectively our um, control slope times MT times AY. Effectively, what we want to do is that effectively the delta steer term is the control power, R, uh, the term following the yaw rate R is effectively our yaw damping. But this little puppy here is our stability index. This is really what we want to extract out. Now, for those of you who want a bit more of an in-depth um, proof on that, I would either refer you to Millikan and Millikan Race Car Vehicle Dynamics, or I would refer you to my book, The Dynamics of the Race Car, um, where both uh, Millikan and myself independently go through and derive um, where those terms um, come from. So. Effectively, the crux of the problem here is what we need to do is we need to come up with a really good method for basically separating out the steer and the yaw rate and the lateral acceleration terms. So what we've got here is that we need to um, apply a bit of a useful approximation. Now, the reason we're going to be applying this useful approximation is that a lot of times you're going to be placed in situations where you're not going to be given the complete deal in terms of all the data. So this is basically where you've got to use a bit of common sense and um, a little bit of engineering knowledge to help you fill in the, br uh, to fill in the blank. So what we're going to do here is we're going to approximate the lateral force due to steering, which we've termed FYF underscore steer underscore correction, as the total lateral force 
times 1 minus delta minus a times a y on vx on alpha max. Now, where that comes from is the fact that uh, where this comes from, and I went through with and I went through this in more depth in one of my race car engineering articles. What we're effectively doing is we're taking the front slip angle and effectively separating out. Uh, uh, what we're doing here is effectively um, separa uh, separating out um, uh, the, steer, uh, the steer term. Now, just to go through what these terms are, delta is steered angle at the tyre and radians. A is distance from the, the front axle to the CG in metres. AY is our lateral acceleration in metres per second uh, in uh, metres per second squared. VX is our vehicle speed in metres per second. And A max is our max slip angle in radians. Now, in terms of what this is going to give us, first things first, I want to draw your attention to this plot where we've basically taken our um, GT3 data that we did last time. And what we've got here, I'd like to direct your attention um, to our uh, the third and the fifth plots. Now, the fifth plot is effectively our end steer, uh, is basically our end steer correction. As you can see, this time around, we've got a much clearer trend in terms of what the lateral, in terms of what the lateral moment is doing, and in particular, you can see straight away plotting that as a function of lateral g. All of a sudden, it becomes a lot clearer in terms of what's going on, and this, particu this becomes particularly apparent for our low speed uh, uh, for our um, low speed corner here. And um, all, uh, and also to our um, front high speed um, sweepers as well, and more importantly, you can now see a pretty clear. Uh, uh, you can now see a pretty clear um, indication of what's going on in terms of our uh, in in terms of. The, uh, the actual lateral force that's being applied as a, as a function of the slip angle um, as opposed to the steered angle. So that's a really, really useful thing. But really, where the cherry on top comes is when we plot that lateral moment as a function of lateral acceleration. Now, for one of those corners, all of a sudden, we can see a really, really clear night and day trend. Again, the lateral acceleration was positive um, for left-hand turn. So consequently, what we can see here is an absolute clear sign that with um, the initial G, the car was pretty pointy. But once we were actually into the G, you can see here really, really clearly, we've got a very, very distinct slope that indicates that um, we do have um, stable behavior. And just as an aside, um, all the calculation techniques we discussed from the last tutorial on this subject still apply to this curve. So you can still go through and um, yeah, take a screen grab of this, take a screen capture, whatever you want to do, and actually calculate those numbers out for yourself. But just going back to here, what more importantly what it does, if we take a look at the difference between steered and neutral steer, you can see, once again, once we're actually into the corner, we've definitely got distinct understeer, which is what we're, uh, uh, which we're, which is what we are seeing, uh, which is what we are seeing here. So really, what this technique does is it really tidies up this tech, uh, it really tidies up the results um, for you. So, um, uh, so pretty much. Let's go through our procedure to calculate the moment. First of all, you calculate the front and the rear, and the rear um, lateral forces, whether you've got either strains fitted to the car, you've got um, log lateral forces from simulation, or you've got um, our front and rear lateral accelerometers, as we did last time. We then calculate the corrected front force, which is FYF 1 minus delta minus A times AY on VX squared, divided by alpha max. Just as an aside, where that AY on VX squared comes from is that's an approximation of your rate. So we can really try and separate out what's going on with the side slip term. We then calculate the total lateral moment using the rear lateral force and this corrected FYF steer correction. Reviewing, uh, uh, reviewing, um, that as, uh, 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 reviewing that as a result, as we can see here, we've now got really, really clear. Uh, we've now got really, really clear trends over the lap. This is actually comes from our actual um, lateral acceleration um, data. So you can now we can now take a look at some really, really clear and distinct, uh, distinct results. I do, uh, I do have a slight apology. What I showed you previously was some simulated data. So my apologies for not clarifying that. But here, this is a that, uh, that definitely does understeer and as you can see we've got some really night and day results here and you can see that in terms of the blue trace which is our 
corrected lateral acceleration steer. We've got our G-force lateral, so you can see some really, really clear. Uh, so you can see some really, really clear results um, that are um, uh, going uh, that are uh, that are going uh, that are going on here. And um, uh, plotting the and uh, plotting this for a particular corner, once again, you're getting a clear and distinct trend. The reason that slopes the other way around is one of the things I did do is in this particular plot um, for my end steer correction, I actually did correct it for the correct sign of where um, lateral moment should be, so that um, for a left hand turn, uh, for um, a right hand uh, turn, uh, for a right hand turn. Um, the moment uh, was actually uh, the moment was actually positive, so I just wanted to clarify that. But for a particular corn, that is absolute night and day. And as we discussed, um, we can go through um, and uh, use exactly the same techniques to calculate the stability index. Now, this is a really, really I cannot stress enough that this is a really, really powerful tool for a number of reasons. First things first, even before you plot an X Y plot. You can be looking at, let's just say that you've got a driver who comes in, says, oh, now the car's spooky, it's undrivable, etc., etc. The beauty about doing an instant overlay of a lap like this is that you can all of a sudden now look at and steer correction, lateral G, and do a really, really, really quick assessment of the situation. And let me tell you something. When all hell's breaking loose in pit lane, this is going to be the thing that is going to endear you to, to, to your race engineer and to team management, or if you are a race engineer, it allows you to cut through the chaff. Um, uh, it, cut, it allows you to cut through the white noise really, really, really quickly. And then when you go off and do your post analysis, obviously you can do your um, uh, you can do your x uh, you can do your x y plot. And again, uh, let me just say that uh, we can apply the techniques we used in our first tutorial to use this plot to calculate out what our stability index should be. So to sum up. One of the things that's really good about this is that we've definitely improved the way of uh, of really nailing down that stability index. Yes, it is an approximation, but as an approximation, it works really, really well. And before some of you um, get really uptight and concerned about this, just remember the neutral steer channel we discussed many uh, we um, posted two years ago on Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner. That's based on an approximation, albeit a pretty good one. And I can tell you right now, I've lost count of the number of times I've seen that approach used. So for those of you who really want to get anal with this, um, I would strongly suggest look at where this comes from, but I would give this a whirl um, first. But the crux of this technique is you use the steer correction to determine the front total force, and then you put that as part of your moment. Now, the next step now, I leave to you guys. Give this a run, have a look at some data, um, use this for yourself, and I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised what a powerful tool this is, and more importantly, how you can use it to really nail uh, 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 to really nail down what's going on with the car. And in particular, what I really want to point out is this now allows you to go in corner to corner and get a really clear read on what's going on, and that from data is absolutely priceless. So. What I now do, to, uh, uh, so what I'm now, um, uh, so I now invite you guys to go off, get some data, throw some mud in the wall, and really try this out for yourself and um, see what a powerful tool it can be. And we'll catch you in the next episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner.